everybody coming out and bringing their kids out to play football for us. Um, I'm Dan Ford, in case anybody doesn't know. I'm the president of the Susquehanna Township. This is going to be the, probably the first time you're going to hear this. Susquehanna Township Youth Football and Cheer Association. Uh, I'm going to start with that first. Uh, we officially changed our name and did away with the midget moniker. Um, you're going to start seeing that more and more, but I didn't want to surprise everybody with it, and nobody knew who the heck's go or what the heck's going on. So, welcome to the Susquehanna Township Youth Football Youth Football and Cheer Association. Um, again, I'm Dan. Eileen is the vice president. Steve is our football coordinator. Um, he's the guy you go to if you have a problem that you can't get resolved with a coach. And if you can't get Steve to resolve it, then you come to the board. So he's he's your kind of like next step from your coach before you come to the board. He's the guy you go to. He'll resolve any issues you have. He, he's, a, he's a pony coach, so he'll be at the pony practices pretty much every night. So that's who you see. Um, I kind of got, I, I, I pulled something together here. We've been starting to use the word tribe on everything. Um, I don't know if anybody, you know, put together why we do that, but I, we all consider everybody here family. And the definition of a tribe is a social division in a traditional society consisting of families or communities linked by a social, economic, religious, or blood ties. That's us. We're a tribe. Good, bad, or indifferent, that's what we are. So, just like any other any other family, we're gonna have issues, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be goofy, we're gonna be that cousin that you don't really want to associate with. But the reason that we started using that, or, or we started using it because we like it, but there's a there is a reason behind it. So I wanted to put that out to everybody. I'm going to kind of roll through the rest of this, but I just wanted to touch base and then I'll hit, I'll, I'll get Steve up and then the coaches that it decided to come over. Um, first and foremost, new parents. If, you, if you've never been here before, uh, if this is your first year with us, don't be afraid to ask questions. Come find a board, now, a board member, myself, Eileen, Steve, there's 11 of us. Um, Steve, uh, Steve, like I said, is a football coordinator. Jill is a is a board member. She's the cheer coordinator. Dave Dietz is the treasurer. Sheena Wilson is a midget parent. Where are you at? She's right there waving at everybody. I'll call her up later. Um, Janelle McLam is a midget parent. Is Janelle here? Um, Brent Johnson is a Smurf parent. I don't know if he's here yet or not. I can't see everybody. Um, John John Riley is a is a Pee Wee coach. Um, yeah, Tony parent, Pee Wee parent, cheer parent, coach, board member, and then Herman Simmons is a Smurf coach. He's another board member. So you can approach any of us for any questions you have. Um, don't be afraid to ask other parents if they've been here. They may know the answer. But the biggest thing is don't be afraid to ask the question. Um, if you don't know, you don't know until you ask. Uh, equipment. So some of, you, some, of you, some of your players don't have helmets yet. Um, they should be here next week. I'm saying next week. They're saying maybe by the end of this week. But I'm realistic, so I'm looking at Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday of next week for the helmets to get here. If your football player has any issues with equipment, tell them to start with their coach. Have their coach check them out. If the coach feels they need to get checked out, he'll send them down to me. Shoulder pads. Shoulder pads are mostly all brand new this year. If they're not brand new from this year, they're brand new from last year. So there shouldn't be any issues there, except for the ones last year have metal clips. They get lost easy. I stock a ton of them, so if you need a metal clip, send them to the shed and I'll get one for them. Jerseys, practice jerseys. Um, so we put everybody in practice jerseys because our, our new ones haven't come in yet. Once we once we get them in, we'll reissue um, and we'll decide if we're going to let your guys keep those jerseys or not. Um, 
that's gonna we'll have to talk to the board um you know and, and see what they decide on it injury if your child is injured at, on the field um the coach will tend to them if if it's more serious than that the coach will bring the parent out and we'll get an ambulance whatever we need to do have you take them to the hospital you know but here at practice if they're injured coach will tend to them first if they need you they'll come get you if you're not here we'll call you um concussions are kind of are kind of the the new thing in the last couple of years i'm sure everybody's you know heard all the press and, and is aware of everything that's going on with concussions here's the bottom line on it if your kid gets injured if, if they have a head injury the coach is going to send them home they're going to tell you to take them to the doctors they're going to tell you to take them to the hospital they do not come back and participate until they're cleared by their doctor period don't even bring them if they if they have a if they have a concussion they can come out and watch practice they cannot participate that means and when i say watch i mean they have to sit on their butt and not do anything that's period plain simple and cut and dry there's, there's no ifs ands or buts about it concussions are serious we take them very seriously we pay a buttload of money for helmets to try to prevent as many as we possibly can we keep the kids in the the, the best equipment to, to avoid them but they're still going to happen it's just like any other sport and just to pass along to you football is way down on the list of concussion production soccer is the number youth soccer is the number one concussion sport in the in the country period so if, if your if your buddies are saying i don't know or if your friends are saying i don't know why you're letting your kid play football they're going to get a concussion well you're letting your kid play soccer definitely going to get one there too it's just a given any sport it can happen wrestling baseball um i just the other day um arizona was it arizona what i think i don't quote me but i think it was arizona's pitcher um took 108 mile a 108.1 mile an hour fastball to the face injuries happen any sport even not and not even in sports just walking down the street just playing injuries happen the bottom line is we just have to be proactive, do what we can to prevent them, and when they do happen, we have to react to it and, and make sure the children heal before they come back. All of our co thank you. All of our coaches are certified um, to recognize concussions. We're certified in tackling. Um, we take we use USA Football. They lead they lead football in the nation in. Um, teaching coaches, teaching them procedures, teaching them tackling drills, teaching them how to, how to teach it properly, recognizing concussions, heat exhaustion, heart problems. Uh, you know, all of our coaches are required to do that. So we do everything we can to make sure your kids are as safe as possible. Um, I touched on this briefly only so the fields are the sideline boundaries what we consider on our, our, our field of play is the sideline boundaries the whole way around um, every field is marked with white paint in, in some form or fashion um, parents you cannot come on the fields it's that simple your side of the field is over here our side of the field is on the inside of the white line. If a kid's injured enough that we need to get you, we will bring you on. It is not our rule. It is a Pennsylvania state law. You have to be background checked. You have to be, you have to have a PSP background check. You have to have PA child abuse clearances. You have to have FBI clearance if you, if you haven't lived in the state for 10 years continuously. It is, again, point blank period. It is a state law. You have to stay off the fields until you're invited and escorted by a coach. So if your child is injured and we need you, we will come get you. If he's not injured enough to come get you, he will be escorted off the field, at which point you can go up and baby them. Don't do it while they're on the field. Playing time. Steve will hit on this a little bit too. We do not guarantee varsity players playing time, period. I'm going to say it again. We do not guarantee varsity players playing time, period. 
JV players will get in. Don't count your minutes. Don't count your plays. Count your experience. There's, there's reasons coaches don't put players in at certain times. Sometimes it is due to a lack in development with the player. They don't want to get hurt. So if they're not being put in, it should not be because of any other reason other than their safety. On the JV squad, they're going to get playing time. They're going to get on the field. Um, so don't count your don't count your minutes. Don't count your plays. Count your count the experience you get while you're on the field and make it better. Problems and issues. I started off with um, if you're having an issue, talk to your coach. Talk to your assistant coach. Talk to the team parent. If they're not resolving the problem, you come to Steve. After, if Steve doesn't resolve the problem, bring it to the board. The board will take, you know, the board will then take it into consideration, and we'll come up with a solution and get back to you on it. Education and good behavior kind of goes hand in hand with issues and problems. Um, we take education very seriously here. If your kid is not doing it in the in in the school in the classroom. We don't want them to do it here. So if they're not, if they are not doing what they're supposed to do in class, if they're acting up, if they're not doing their schoolwork, if they're getting bad grades, let your coach know. Keep them at home. They have to get an education before they can play football. Again, it's simple. There's no, there's no gray area. It's cut and dry. The midgets. The coaches check up on the midgets. I don't know if they get grades. I'll let Rich talk about that. But um, again, we take it very, very seriously. If they're not a good student, they're not a good athlete. All right, parking. I've sent email after email and Facebook post after Facebook post. If it is marked as no parking, handicapped, permitted parking, yellow zone, red zone, or it's a neighbor's grass or driveway, do not park there. You're going to get ticket, you're going to get towed, and they will continue. Our neighbors do not like us. That is that simple. Uh, the, it, they, they, do, they dislike us. They hate us because we take up the streets. We're kind of noisy. Uh, I, you know what? I don't even know all the reasons, but they don't like us. So as soon as there's an issue, they call the police. The police come out and do their job. If you're parked illegally, you get a ticket. There is the grass right out here. That, is in, uh, that lines the baseball field, you can park there. There's a parking lot right here behind the, behind the middle school, and there's a big parking lot out front. Look, I should park out there every day because I could use the exercise, and pretty much everybody else is in the same boat. There's not too many people who, here who, who couldn't use the walk. Um, there's a bunch of handicapped spots right over here. Um, as long as you have a handicapped park, uh, plate or placard, you can park. There's a fire hydrant. I actually just noticed it while I was out, out there. There is actually a car parked illegally right now. They are, they are not 15 feet from the fire hydrant. They will get ticketed. It's that simple. If the, if the police roll through, they're going to write it because it's parked illegally. Pick up and drop off of your kids. Hey, you don't have to stay at practice every night the whole time. Um, I get that question all the time. Do I have to stay? Do I have to stay here the whole time? Can I, you know, if I have a day, I have to do something. Absolutely, you can drop your child and go. Drop them responsibly. So if you have a pee wee or a smurf, take them to their field so that their coach knows they're here, and then you, then you can roll. If you have a pony or a midget, make sure they go right to their field, and then you can go. Coming, coming back to get them. Two things. First, be here by 7.45. Second, keep an eye on a radar or the news or something because just because it's raining here doesn't mean it's raining over on 2nd Street. I had that the other day. There was a flood right out here and it didn't rain a drop at my house. So uh, make sure that you're paying attention to the weather. Keep your phone on you. Make sure Coach has your phone number. If it's changed, update it with us. I have everybody's phone number, but if you change it, I don't get it automatically. Um, when you're picking up and dropping off, be really, really careful. It's going to start getting dark. We try to keep it lit as much as possible, 
but don't be rolling through the alley at 100 miles an hour and you know there's kids walking around make sure you're paying attention to who's walking out of where and make sure they're not coming out from a dark crevice we don't want anybody getting hurt um, smurfing uh, again smurfing peewee parents specifically smurf parents we'd like you to pick your children up at the field um, every now and then we'll get one that wanders away we have to shut everything down, close the gates, don't let anybody leave. Everybody's stuck here until we figure out where that kid's at. So um, the Smurf kids specifically, the easiest thing to do is pick your children up at the field from the coach. Trash on, and, uh, trash on the fields and around the fields. If you or your child bring something, take it when you leave. Uh, make sure you know the area you're hanging out at is picked up when you're done. These are not our fields, they are, the, they are the school district's fields. I get my butt chewed out every time there's one little piece of trash left. They will find it and I'll hear about it. Picture day. I'll let Eileen talk about that, hold on. Because she knows all of it. Fundraising. Um, for, so this year for registration, all we did is the raffle. Um, it came down to logistics. It's really, really hard to kind of manage everything coming in. So we did away with everything else for registration, only did the raffle. Uh, we are going to offer some fundraisers later in the season. It won't be for registration. It'll be for something else um, that'll benefit your child. But um, they are the fundraising, the raffle tickets are due back August the 18th. Raffle tickets in 150 or 185 bucks, depending on if you're a family or if you're a single, if you have a single child or a family that's playing. Jerseys, game jerseys will not be issued until your fundraising money is turned in. Um, so if, if you don't turn your fundraiser money in by the by the 18th, and if it's still not turned in by the 27th, your child won't have a jersey. They won't be able to play the game. Uh, the exception to that would be if you're having an issue, come talk to me. I'll make you know I, I'll play. Let's make a deal. But if you don't come talk to me, I don't know what's going on. If they're just not going to have a jersey for the game. We are doing something a little different this year with uh, with shirts and apparel, spirit wear, whatever you want to call it. I put it out in an email yesterday. If you go to our website, stmfa.com. And click on online, no, just store, team store. Um, that takes a, that that redirects you to prep wear, or prep sportswear. There's a lot of different items you can choose between t-shirts, athletic shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, um, shorts, pants, bags, and then there's about eight, eight or nine or ten different logos and stuff you can put on them. None of them are branded with our stuff because we couldn't do that. But that's that's your first option to get apparel, and most of it's pretty cool. The process is really easy. I actually did it this morning. Um, it took me about, well, once I picked what the heck I was gonna order, it took me about a minute and a half to, to finish. It's really, really simple. The second option you're gonna have is, um, I'm hoping we will have out by the end of this week. It depends on when we get it from the, uh, from the supplier. We're doing, shirts that are um, sublimated shirts which means everything's printed right onto the shirt itself it's not like it, it's not screened in or it's not embroidered on it's embroidered on it's actually printed into the shirt just like a pattern would be that stuff is a little more expensive than what we're typically used to but the process is different but it's some pretty cool stuff so there's going to be a paper that we'll hand out you order what you want off of it bring that and the money to the shed and and we'll place the order uh, in one bulk order. It'll have a due date and all that stuff on it. Uh, but our website, um, stmfa.com, there's a calendar on it. We post every every event in the calendar. Our games are in the calendar. Picture day is in the calendar. This was in the calendar. Everything's there. Uh, it's just a matter of how to find it. So if it's a, if it's an association-wide event, it's going to be right on that main calendar. Um, if you if, if you scroll over a date, everything will pop up. Some of it's already there, and it'll give you more information if you scroll over the date. Um, the other way you can do it is the Bonzi T-Map. Everybody should have got an invitation link to it. The Bonzi T-Map basically lets us communicate with you, and you communicate with us 
in a little bit of a different platform, like a, a cell phone platform. There's also a calendar in there, right when you log in, that tells you upcoming events for your specific team. So, um, like for example, the 19th, there's scrimmages. Um, now everybody has one, but if we schedule the scrimmage that only the midgets had, it would only show up in, in theirs on that thing. Um, where it might not show on the main team calendar or the main page calendar because it's not for every team. We don't want everybody showing up. So the Bonzi team app is actually a very good thing. Um, if you need a new link, get with me. Send me an email. Send me a text message. I will get, I will get a new link out to you. Um, it's bonziteam.com. I, I think it's... I think it's bonzyteam.com if you want to go on your computer. Um, Apple and Android both have apps. Behavior at the game, uh, behavior at games and practices. So Steve, Steve alluded to this and asked me to talk a little bit about it, which I had it in here. Um, we used to have a pretty bad rapport, we'll say, with the league, with the officials. Um, and, and even the league has still has kind of a bad rapport with officials. Um, we ask that everybody is, all, is respectful at all times during practices and games. There is not too much that's really, 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 really worth getting worked up over. If there's, you know, if, if there's an issue, we'll deal with it. If there's a refing issue, come to us, we'll deal with it. Um, but the bottom line is we have a zero tolerance, po zero tolerance policy for unsportsmanlike behavior. So, um, we don't want you treating uh, players, other parents, referees, coaches, other coaches, CFA board, you know, CFA members. We don't want you treating them with disrespect. We want you to respect them. If there's an issue, come to us. We'll deal with it. Um, the, we have we we have gotten a relatively good uh, name throughout the CFA throughout Central Pennsylvania, and we want to keep that going moving forward. We want our parents being respectful at all times at games. Um, you know, don't don't heckle the refs, don't heckle the other team, don't heckle the other coaches. You know, treat them how you want to be treated. Uh, it's just that simple. We, it, it's not too much to ask. We can deal with any problems that, that arise. We, as adults, we can sit down, figure it out, and come up with a solution. It's that simple. Uh, here and at the high school and pretty much anywhere we go, there is no smoking within the within the fence or within the playing areas of, of any field we go to. No smoking, no tobacco, no e-cigarettes. Um, same is true at most spots for, for animals. So you'll see that on the fences here, it's posted no animals allowed. Um, they, can't, they, they can't keep squirrels and rabbits off the field, but dogs and cats, they don't want. Um, again, this isn't our field. It's it's the town. Or it's the school district's field. We want to take care of it. We want them to keep welcoming welcoming us back every year. Um, we've been here for a long time. Um, we have we get first crack at this. We never have a scheduling issue here. We almost never have a scheduling issue at the high school. It's all because of you know treating the grounds and everybody with respect. Um, from the school district and, and making sure everything's cleaned up and doing what we're supposed to do. I'm going to give it to Eileen and I'll come back later. Picture day this year is Saturday, September 2nd. It is Labor Day weekend. Do not have a game. So, picture day, Saturday, September 2nd. It'll be it'll be at the high school. It is Labor Day weekend. We are do not have a game on Sunday, however. So that weekend will be picture day. We will be getting the picture forms out probably in the next. I would say two weeks. There'll also be an email coming with a link to what can be ordered online through Youth Sports that's not available through the uh, the picture form orders. We will get times out as soon as they are definitive. We usually stagger our teams through Smurfs on up through Midgets throughout the day. 
So be looking, keeping an eye on your emails for the time as well as the link to online purchases. <laughs> Hey, can y'all hear? Can y'all hear me? All right, that's a little better. I'm gonna talk about education. We go by. What's up? For pictures? Is there a makeup day for pictures? Yeah, we've done that before, so it can work out. It's not. We're never going to be able to do it on a date that works for everybody. So there's going to be some reason. But we'll do what we can to make sure that you get your child gets their pictures taken. Okay. I want to talk about education. Um, it's, it, we have student athletes and we take it very seriously here. I met with all the coaches, all the assistant coaches, the cheerleading coaches, everybody knows. Once school starts, we go three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The rule is for any player out here, if you miss one practice, it's excused. You miss a second practice, you can't play the first half. You miss all three practices, you can't play in the game. And I, I actually had to go through this in the semifinals on a Super Bowl winning year, when we had to bench two starters for that reason. It's, a, it, it's the rule. If you can't make it, whether you're sick, whatever, and you don't make it all three days that week, you can't play that game. If you miss two games, two practices that week, you can't play the first half. Is, there, that, is that clear to everybody? It's, it's only fair. Now, when it comes to school, if they miss a practice because they, well, I'm sorry, let me start that over. When it comes to school, we want your children to finish their homework before they come to practice. So when you get home from work, some of y'all don't even get to go home from work, or you don't get to check your child's stuff, some of you don't get to change, relax. If your child, when you get home, check your child's homework. If they haven't completed it, they stay home and do it, and they will, it will be excused. It will be excused because that has to be the priority. Is that everybody get that? Everybody good with that? All right. I want to ask you any questions for us, because we're doing a lot of preaching. Any questions? You guys are good. All right, I'm gonna ask you one favor, and this is what happens every year. The first game, we're gonna be really good on all levels. Our cheerleaders are gonna be the best in the area. And we're also gonna try to do a, a cheer comp team down the line. But I'm gonna explain this to you. We start off the season, we'll be winning, and parents sit in the bleachers, like we're doing now. As we get mid-season, parents start getting about right here to the field. Come Super Bowl or semifinals, we're standing at the fence talking to our kid. I'm trying to coach your kid who's right here, and you're telling him, Johnny, you got to hit harder. And I'm just telling him I need him to go switch sides. He's going to pay attention to you. And that causes issues, and we lose. So please, stay in the bleachers. Enjoy the show. Thank you, everybody. Good. All right, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to wrap the rest of this up relatively quick. Uh, I know this is mundane. It's kind of boring, and it's a lot of stupid stuff. The problem is we have to do it. If we don't do it, somebody's gonna come and say you never told me, you never told me, you never told me. So I know it sucks that we got to do it, but hey, it's one of those things, kind of like work. It's just one of those things you got to do. Um, Concessions, concession volunteers. Every year, it's like pulling teeth to get people to work in the concession stand. It is fun. Look, if you haven't done it, try it out. It's actually relatively fun. I mean, we have a good time. We joke in there. Yeah, it's kind of busy, and you're, and you're hustling around, but everybody has a pretty good time and jokes around. And if nothing else, after you're done working, you get some, you get some, a free drink and a hot dog or what, chicken, whatever you want. You get a little bit of free food. I like free food, so. Um, but what we're going to do is I, uh, I think we're going to try the volunteer spot again for at least the first couple of weeks. So, again, if you go to our website, stmfa.com, at the very bottom, the ta our tabs are on the left. They're not along the top. If you go to the very bottom tab, I think it says concessions. If you go into that tab, you'll be able to volunteer. Whether your kids JV or varsity, they will both be in there. They are. Uh, I think. I think varsity games are, I have built right now, but I don't have JV games built in yet. Eventually, they will be. You'll be able to volunteer. Um, we are going to have a lot of JV home games. Well, not here, but right there this year. Um, so we're going to open that anytime we're here for JV games. Um, the American Conference of the CFA pulled out, 
so um, they needed extra fields. So we're going to end up doing a lot of we're going to we're going to do a lot of JV games here. All of our teams will be here. We'll probably do a game, an extra game or two every every week, um, so because they need fields. Um, so I'm, there might be extra dates in there. If you can help out on, a, on those extra dates when you know when we need it, that'd be greatly appreciated. The other thing we're going to try to do this year, we did. Um, I think we did one playoff game last year. We hosted one playoff game. I think we're going to try to do one at each round. We're going to try to do uh, first round playoffs, second round playoffs, and we're going to try to do a day of hosting Super Bowls. Um, the point behind that is, first of all, I'm pretty sure we're going to have at least one team in the Super Bowl. So if we can get one team in the Super Bowl, chances are we'll be hosting it. Um, the other reason is, and I'm going to touch on this just a little bit, it brings, a, it brings in money. Um, I'll touch, that's the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I'll get to it in just a second. The other thing is, volunteers, does, the only time we need volunteers isn't just for concessions. All of us are. All of our coaches are volunteer. All the board members are volunteer. Everybody who does anything around here is a volunteer. We're always looking for new board members. I don't want to be the president forever. I'd like to walk away tomorrow if I could. So, um, you know, we need, we need young people with younger parents, people who are, have Smurfs or Peewees, to kind of step in and start filling some of these roles in so that some of us old people can get the heck out of here and let you guys take over. Um, I won't walk away until I know somebody's ready to, you know, un until somebody's ready to take over. Um, it's not just, unfortunately, this this isn't just one of those positions you just step into and do. Um, it, it's kind of one that you have to learn over the course of maybe a year. There's a lot to it. Uh, but the more the more volunteers we get to do all this stuff, the less all of us have to do, which means the less stress all of us have. We all have full time jobs. Um, every uh, Every board member ha it works full time, so you know it, it, the more we have to do, the more we're taking away from our families. Um, equipment return. So I'm not sure how we're going to do it this year, but we're probably going to do equipment return a little bit different. But the point of it is, I need all of your equipment back at the end of the season. This is going to be a helmet reconditioning year which means I have to send all the helmets out to get taken apart, sanded down, polished, painted, checked out, make sure everything's working right, make sure there's no broken parts on them, get face mask dip, blah, 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 blah. I need them all back at the end of the season. I can't be tra tracking people down until June next year or else we won't have those helmets. We're, obviously, every year we're buying helmets, and it's not because, it's not because you're not returning them. That, uh, it's because we have that many kids. So we're up about 20%. Anybody who's a midget right now or midget parent right now, you can, you can look over the fields and know we're 20%, our, our enrollment's up 20% from three years ago. So, or maybe even more. Uh, we're getting to the point, I think we almost have 200 football players this year. Um, that's huge. You know, we have 41 Smurfs, 49 Peewees, 50 Ponies, and 31 Midgets. Uh, those numbers are just, they, I have, I've been here a long time and I haven't seen them that big since I've been here. So we had a couple of years where we had big levels, but we've never been this big across the board. We're up to 100 cheerleaders, actually 101 cheerleaders this year. Um, so our cheer numbers are up. We're building, this is, you know, this is a plan. This is a, a the plan is to build this program up, get it running, able to sustain itself. Um, and that brings me into the next thing. Um, the cost to run the program. Where does all the money that you guys shell out for registration fees and fundraising fees and all that stuff, where does that go to? It's pretty easy if you look around. We have, we probably have about $25,000 worth of helmets out on the field right now. Um, we have $15,000 worth of jerseys on the field. Uh, uh, well, I'm, actually they're still in the shed because we haven't issued game jerseys yet. Um, I have, I think it's $6,000 worth of practice jerseys coming in in the next couple of days. Um, I have 30 new helmets coming, 3,900 bucks. 30 helmets, 3,900 bucks. Um, we're, we just purchased new cheer uniforms. Hopefully they're here by the first game. We're all crossing our fingers and toes. $16,000 for cheer uniforms. 
that that's they're expensive jerseys and and cheer uniforms are kind of the most expensive things we buy they're even more expensive than a helmet a helmet protects your nugget so you don't so you don't scramble your scramble your eggs uh, a jersey and a uniform just looks pretty and a cheer uniform just looks pretty but they're more expensive um pom-poms i i swear to god we just spent a thousand dollars on pom-poms like um uh, maintenance personnel every time we have a, a an event at roscoe warner we have to have maintenance there for the entire time it's 25 bucks an hour and that's our price that's not like that's not some, that's that's the price they give to us um so 25 bucks an hour over the course of however many games we have th during a season we're talking 15 15 to 2500 bucks um ambulance at, that ambulance that sits at the end of the field we're required to have that that's fifteen to two fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a season. Anytime we have an event that that multi, you know that it's more than just a practice, we're required to have that. Um, background checks for coaches that we do every year. Uh, they each cost. I, I it's like seven dollars a piece. Um, everything adds up. We put out. We shell out a, a, almost or right around a hundred thousand dollars a year to keep this program running to keep your kids in, in, in the best helmets, to keep your kids in the best shoulder pads and the best jerseys, to make sure that you know everything's happening that needs to happen. So that's where the money goes. And if anybody ever wants to come to our board meeting and, and take a look at the books, come on out. We'll crack them wide open. Um, you know, some, we, everything we do, every, every dime we bring into the, to, to the program goes back. Um, and then some that, some that we don't bring in. So, um, you know, rest assured, everything goes back to your kids. We have, we have five people at all times watching our checking account, um, or I guess four technically. Um, the way we do things, everything's changed a little bit over the last few years. Um, I have the only credit slash debit card. I have, the, I have all the checkbooks. Dave, our treasurer, checks everything. So he's over there. Anytime anything's spent, he's scrutinizing it. It's going into QuickBooks. It's getting labeled what it is. It, it actually most of it's set up. It tells us what it is because it it, it knows because we've we've built it in. Uh, Eileen, Eileen has access at tw 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, every everything is being du checked, double checked, triple checked, and scrutinized, and one person doesn't control everything so the person who writes the checks isn't the person who's checking that there's a reason for that if if i'm writing a check and i write it to myself dave catches that why'd you write a check to yourself see what i'm saying so everything is everything is counterbalanced and double checked and um you know we do everything as securely as we possibly can um I'm sure there's things we could get better at, and we do every, every, every day, every year, we strive to get better on our end. The, the bottom line is we want the best program in central Pennsylvania. We want your kids to be playing for the premier football program in central Pennsylvania, and that's what we're building to do. That's what we're working on. Um, anybody who's been around for five, six, seven, eight years, you saw where we were. We, you know, we, we're building. You know, we 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 ended up. We were up here. We ended up slowing or taking a big hit and slumping, and we were way down here. A couple of years ago, at the pony level, we only had 13 kids, 13 boys at the pony football level. 50, 50 registered players at pony football this year. So everything we're doing is trying to build this program back and bring it like exactly what I said, to be the best in central Pennsylvania. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So that's pretty much all I have. Oh, you know what I forgot. Um, so money, where's that money come from? Where's the $100,000 that we spend annually come from? Registration money, fundraising money, donations, giant. Um, Carolyn Fortney and Giant donated a pile of water to us. Every water we sell is profit. Um, CVS is getting ready to donate first aid kits to us. Um, that's something we don't have to go buy. Dick's Sporting Goods, they're on our website. 
Dick's Sporting Goods um, supplies us with water bottles, helmets, or not helmets, um, footballs, um, coaching packs, uh, cones, whistles, coaching bags. Uh, you know, they, they, they donate a lot of stuff to the program. And this is our first year that, that we got enrolled in that, so we're really thankful that they reached out and got a hold of us. Um, concessions. I know it's buggy. Concessions, that's the other, that's the last thing. So, believe it or not, we make probably almost as much off concessions as we do registration. So if, if we don't have volunteers to run the concession stand, we're going to lose a ton of money. We don't want to close. I refuse to close. I've been begged multiple times. We don't have enough volunteers. Close the concession stand. Look, I am not going to beg you to come work. I'm just going to do it. It's going to stay open no matter what, period, because it brings in too much money. So that's why I need volunteers. That's where all the money goes to. That's where all the money comes from. You guys know that. I need you to step up and help. I need you to volunteer to do some of this stuff.